So into in the ETCFS tab, the system says, oh, wait a minute here. I'm supposed to mount this and the system is missing all this here. So what happens? It goes into the control D mode. So I'm going to paste this in the file. So what you have to do is you have to give the root password here. And the system looks like it logs in, right? But if you do a run level, the system is unto unknown. Did I already talked about run level? Give me one minute here. Yeah, I have I have not talked about a run level here, so I will I will do that in a minute here. Okay, so now now what happens here is you logged in here, but you are not able to connect using the network. You have to physically be in front of the machine, or you have to um, you have to somehow log in using the KVM here. I'll talk about that that also in a few minutes here but when you get to this point here what you have to do is you have to um, you have to go to vi etc fs tab and go in here and hit enter and uh, which ones are the extra lvm in here So either you delete this or you put the comments out. So when you put a pound sign in front of the, you know, when you put a pound sign in front of this here, it will comment here and tell you. Give me one second, let me get my iPad.
Okay, so what will happen here is when you um, essentially this file is a configuration file, right? It will read this file during the boot process and uh, either you could delete this or you put um, yeah you delete that or you put this uh, uh, pound sign in there so what will happen is when you put the pound sign it will not be read by the system Okay, this uh, um, line will be unreadable by the system here. Okay, all right, good. So let me save this. Oh God. Okay, and what I'm going to do is uh, so I'm going to save and exit. Okay, and I'm going to restart the system here.
Okay, now you are able to get back in the system, correct? Can you check? Aisha? I'm still not able to connect to uh, what, number one, server number one. Yeah, so try it now. Did you just try? I am go I'm going to do it right now. Yeah, because uh, we are we we just fixed it. That's what I was explaining you. Your number one IP is uh, ten dot one dot ten dot nine. Yes, I am able to connect now. Okay. So the reason you are not able to connect is system rebooted. But right. did you change the IP uh, number? Is it two fifty now? No. I change. Uh, I fix the issue here because. When we were going into VIETCFS tab, the file system where the system was looking for these two file system here. And during the boot process, when the system is restarting, if it doesn't find that, it will halt itself. Okay? Mm -hmm. So when it halt itself, you cannot connect. Now what we what I we did is we went in there and we removed it. Uh, we dis uh, disable those lines. Okay. Okay. Only to read. Only to read. Right. Disable it to read. Yeah. Now once we disable it, the system is not looking for these two lines anymore. Okay. So what happened now? System is system came back up and it is up and running now. So if you do df hyphen h, so those two lines where you have mounted and everything, it, it's not mounting now because we don't need it, and the okay. reason it went into uh, uh, the emergency mo uh, into the control D mode is because the system was reading those files, and the reading the in uh, in reality the files are missing. Okay, why is missing? You probably run the dd command, right? If I check the history. Yes. So you ran the dd command. That's why the system was uh, went into that mode. Why? Because you wiped it off. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the run level now. So I'm going to close this out and we don't need this.
give me just a minute here. So I need to go into <coughs> So now what will happen what is going to happen is now I'm going to talk about run levels And uh... is this related to class? Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. okay. All this thing I'm putting in here is related to class, yeah. So now, what is happening now is, <coughs> there are various, uh, uh, in, uh, there are various, various levels that the system will be in, okay? Uh, so the, it's possible for a system to be in uh, so many different modes. Okay, so first one is, so we have, uh, what we have here is, uh, it's called a run level of operating state. Stage or stage, what stage the system is running into right now. So if everybody on your system if you type run level and hit enter, it will tell you what run level it's in. Okay, so it says three. And there is another way you could check what run level you are in is you name hyphen R. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, you name hyphen A, I think. What? My bad. So you type either run level or who hyphen R and it will tell you the run level the system is it in number three. Okay, so let, I'm gonna explain you what run level three is. So the system has, Linux system has 
seven run levels. Okay, so the very first one is, it goes through run level one to seven, that's it. And then I'm gonna explain you each run level. Okay. Uh, So, run level starts from zero, run level zero, and it starts from zero to six, total of seven. Okay, so now, if I say the system is in run level zero, that means the system will go down and the command to bring the system down is zero, init zero. I'm gonna go below, all right. So watch. I have, I'm gonna go into, uh, where is Zephyr 1? So I have Zephyr 1 here, right? So let me minimize all this here. Number one. Okay. So this is my server one here, okay? So what I'm doing here is, so for me, run level zero, I want to bring the system into run level zero. This is called shutdown board. And to shut down the system, the command is INIT zero. Please don't do this uh, on this server here, okay? Please don't. And uh, because if you do that, then I have to go in there and turn it back on. But I'm gonna just do the demo here. If I do INIT zero and hit enter, and you see the system in the background, it will go down. Okay, soon it will be going down here. Oh, by the way, I have to do this as a root user. So if you do who, and if you do who am I, it will tell you root here. And you could also see here you are a, you are a root user. Okay, now what we'll do is, I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm an administrator, I want to shut this system down. In real life, you don't do that either. So don't do it on this system. But if you want to shut it down, you type INIT zero and you hit enter. And in the background, you see the system is something is happening here. 
it says powering off. So what happened, if you look he here, this is my system, Zephyr 0, 0, 02, I turn, turn it off with the command here. Okay, any questions? <clears throat> okay, good. Now I'm gonna bring the system back up. So in this scenario, you have to physically bring the system back up. Okay, but I don't recommend to do the, doing this here because if you do this, then I have to go down and do this here. Just for your knowledge, just keep it as. If you type init zero, the system will go down. So run level one is the rescue mode. Okay. Rescue or emergency mode. Okay, the system is in emergency mode and in this mode, you don't have no network. And no party connection. And how do you get into the emergency mode? You type in it one. Okay, so what will happen here is let me connect in there again. Okay, and if I'm going to put the system into emergency mode here. You, you have to be in the root, right? Yeah, you have to be in the root. So if I do init init one, okay. So it says uh, the system is going down to the rescue mode here. And I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna type run level or who hyphen r. Please use who hyphen r rather than run level. Okay, it says run level one here. Okay, and it says the control, the system went into the run level one here, control D. So when we, when we were troubleshooting the issue with the LVM, this is the, this is where the system went into, control D mode, control D mode, okay? I'm gonna put the picture here also, I missed one. Now I'm going to do, now since you already learned what control D is, either this is emerg uh, control D mode or emergency mode.
Okay. Now what will happen here is the system goes in here and there won't be a network connection. Right now there is a network connection here, but if you exit and uh, exit here and if you try to do SSSH, the SSH connection won't be there. Why? Because the system is disconnected right now. So what you have to do is you have to type your root password and then I, if I do who hyphen r it says run level 1. Okay now let me go ahead and uh, bring the system back and over here it says which run level it was in, the previous run level it was in. Okay, if you look closely, here it says what run level it was in previously. And then what is the run level and the time. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the uh, run level back here to run level 3 again. So either you could do it the reboot. Usually if the system is in run level 1, you should reboot the system. Okay, so I'm going to reboot the system. Since it was set automatically into uh, the run level mode, it will... Uh, run level 3 it will automatically come up here It's, this one is called also maintenance mode. So sometimes if you want to do some kind of maintenance, it's a, called a maintenance mode also. And most of the time, this is related to LVM.
All right. So either you could reboot the system or you could just type in it to <clears throat> let's do uh, let's go back to init 3 again okay I'm gonna say init 3 and hit enter check if portly service is running okay let's see if we are able to connect okay yeah so we are able to connect why because we are in run level 3 So if you look who hyphen R, we are in level three. Okay, so we type in it in it three again and we are back in the, the run level three here. So now let's talk about run level two. Okay, so what we have here is this is a a multi-user target so how do I explain this um, but no NFS Okay, NFS is over here, you know, sometimes uh, what option we have is when you type DFF and H, we could have LVM here, right? But there would be other LVMs which are coming from the network. It's called network file system. In this uh, mode, network file system won't be available here. So most of the time I don't use it. I I mean this is just informational here. So just list, leave this as informational. And the command to go into that mode is init two. If I go init two, okay. So So I have logged in as a uh, root here and if I do init2, you see here in the background, uh, yeah, I mean nothing much has happened. So you don't normally see any difference here between init2, but if you do who hyphen r, okay, so you are you're still in run level two, run level three why is it Okay, so <clears throat> now let's take a look here. Why is it not showing up here what I'm supposed to have here? Oh. 
Okay, actually this is unused but configured as it's level number three. What is NFS? Yeah, th those are network file systems. Okay. Um, so you know how you have LVM on a local machine? You could also have LVM connection from a network also, from another machine. Okay, so that is one thing. Oh God, I hope this doesn't crash today. Okay, and then let's take a look at run level three. The most of the time you will be working in run level three. So this is called a multi-user mode. Multi-user mode with NFS. So you won't feel a difference here. This is a default mode. Okay, and most of the time, most of the system, when you connect, it will be on run level 3. Okay, and there is a run level 4, it's not used. Run level 5 is a graphical user mode.
is called GUI. So the Linux has a, a built-in built -in way to have something that looks like Windows here. Okay, and it's called Run Level 5. So I'm not able to show you on this uh, systems here because it's not installed. So the run level, uh, the graphical user interface, you have to install it. So most of the time it's not installed in the system. It's not needed. Okay, but this is just informational here. And uh, what about run level 6, Coban? Run level 6 is a reboot here, okay? And the command is init6. So from here, if I type init6, you could see in the background the system will reboot and you have to be the root user. So here the system goes back, shuts down and comes back up and loads into the run level 3 again. So I'm gonna I'm gonna skip all that here. At run level one is important, and run levels three and six. So run level three is the default mode. This is also called a multi-user mode, right? Did I put that down here? Yeah, multi-user mode. So let's take a look here in run level three. So when you type run level three or who hyphen r, what what is it actually happening here? So how do you find out um, the multi-user mode is is the system is running in? So what you type is system ctl. System CTL get default and it will tell you this is in a multi user dot target. That means the system is running in run level 3. Hey, Mr. Zephyr, can you hear me? Yes. Are you back? Um, when you ran run level 3, when you typed in run level 3, uh, before the 3 popped up, I think, when you typed in run level, sorry, not run level 3. Uh, there was an N behind it. What does the N stand for? Uh, this N right here? Yes, that N. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think I saw that before, but it's showing you N there, right? Hmm. Does it say mode or node? Give me one second here. I think it means number. No, no. <laughs> Do you think so? I think so. Um. Uh, 
let's do init 5 oh god And I'm gonna do init five. And I'm gonna run run level. Oh, okay. So this would be same thing as uh, what was the previous one. So if it says before reboot, what was the previous state? Previous state, it doesn't know nothing, probably none. And then right now it's on run level five which is graphical user mode but since graphical user mode is not installed you cannot see it okay you know what hold on just for the sake of the class i think i have something here so when you run run level five uh in it five once when while you're in in it three and when you're in regular mode does it mean that uh it's that both run levels are active because it's saying three and five no. When you run run level, no. It says three means previous ones and five is previous what is it one. right now. Okay, okay. All right. Like, Thank you. Yeah, Sorry, I missed a, f a little bit of the class, so I'm trying to figure it out. Sorry about that. Yeah. No, no. You you are you are doing good. So I think I have one server here local. The graphical user uh, interface is not used. Ninety nine point nine percent is not used. Why? Because the the size of, the size of the hard drive it will be sucked up. So you're wasting uh, so much size, space, and also you will be uh, have the system running low, slow. I mean. Okay, here. I think I installed the GUI mode here. So let me start this system here. This is on my local disk. Okay, I'm gonna log in as root. Hopefully, red hat is the password.
Let me reset it. Okay. Okay, I'm not worried about that here. So if I do who hyphen R, okay, here it says who hyphen R it says is run level three. Now if I do init I N I T. Can you make the forms big? Uh, for this I can't, but let me try something else. I, I was trying to get the IP address. Okay, I got the IP here. So I'm gonna say 192.168.56.144. Okay, so I'm connecting to the server on the right side here, right? If I do uh, run level, and if I do who hyphen R, so what is gonna happen here is, I'm gonna have to uh, type init five, then the server is gonna switch to the GUI mode init 5 and then the moment I hit enter it will start switching to GUI mode on the physical server itself inside the putty you could never use GUI okay putty is always gonna be the graphical uh, I'm sorry only the command line but this is a usually the GUI mode is usually good for the physical servers if you install it on a physical servers or a desktop computer, then you could use it. But in my whole career, you never use this in a graphical user mode. Okay, now you see it comes up uh, that looks similar to the Windows, doesn't it?
so this will come up like this here so I'm gonna go in there as Zafar and it kinda looks a little bit like a Windows environment but not quite Okay, this is what it looks like. It looks pathetic. And you go in here, this is your home directory. You have all this in here. And uh, if you like create a file here, I never really use this here. You could also have like a browser coming up. Hey, Mr. Zephyr, I used this a couple of times. It kind of gives you like a good visual like idea of how the directory system works and stuff. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And also you can access the terminal in here too. So the CLI comes up in here as well. Yeah, that is true. So this is what uh, the graphical mode is. I don't normally use this. This is more for like if you want to have some fun, uh, you know, install this. Uh, you could definitely do this uh, here. It's a little bit, for me, it's a little bit challenging because I go into like graphics and all that. I'm not familiar with, I'm familiar with Windows a lot more. But, uh, you know, I heard about NASA. NASA, the space agency, even on their desktop computers, they're not using Windows, they're using Linux and they're putting uh, the GUI version on it for the end users. It's kind of slow, that's not... Uh... The reason it's slow is because it's the graphics, you know, the graphics have to load and it takes a lot of uh, a lot of memory and all that here. Okay, so if I do who hyphen har here, and then if I do a uh, run level here, so it comes up here as this. Now, if I want to switch back to a run level three, all I have to do is init three. And then, and then this window will go back into the dark mode. Okay, it's taking a few minutes here. There, there it is. Now the system is back into the user mode here it says okay previous was three five and uh, now it's three and uh, if you do who have an r you said it's on run level three and uh, the last run level it was in was run level five okay so that's all there to it i wouldn't uh, spend too much time on this because the you barely uh, get to use this at all. So let me just take a screenshot.
Okay, and then you all know the uh, last mode, which is GUI mode here. Let me see if I covered everything on run level three. Okay. So where is the where is this all these run levels are set from? So I'm going to shut this down and then get out of this way. Okay, so init 6 is nothing but the system reboots. This is init 6, this is uh, init 5, init 4 is not used, this is init 3, and we looked at uh, init 1 is emergency mode. Okay, so Mirza, if you are get stuck in emergency mode, you have to disable the LVM in the ETCFS tab and it will come back up. Okay, so if you want to see the current default mode, So if you type here, you type um, system CTL get default. So as long as as long as this is set as a, a multi-user mode, which is run level three, no matter what level you are in, it will go back into its original. Uh, original mode when the system reboots okay so when the system reboots it goes back into its default mode okay so right now the default mode is uh, multi-user mode here you could definitely change that around how would you change that around oh you know what let me bring this back up again So if I connect again,
most of the time you never do this here but uh, you know since we are here I'm gonna show this to you so now I have a requirement here if I'm working on a desktop computer I want to uh, keep this in the default mode when it comes up I want it to set as um, run level 5 here so what is the command here simple system ctl set default graphical dot target this is a for default spell wrong so it might not work yeah thank you Okay, and then I'm gonna hit enter. So if I do, um, you know, uh, run level, it still says three here, why? Because the system is uh, running in run level three now. But if I do uh, system CTL, get default, Oh, and it says the target uh, the system is in graphical user mode here. So if you look closely here, what happened? It is actually making a target file, target default file. It removing this sim link and making the target default file to a graphical mode. Uh, we'll take a we'll take a closer look on this when we come back. Okay, now if I do restart the system, what mode you think is going to go into? GUI mode. GUI mode. Yeah. So I'm going to restart thousand times is going to go into GUI mode unless you change it in there, unless you run that command and make it a regular uh, a mode, which is a default to run level three. This is a quick question. Yeah. When you set the uh, set default to graphical dot target, uh, if in that command, if you had uh, like put instead of graphical dot target, instead you put like init five or run level five, it wouldn't work. No, it has to be that exact command. No, yeah, it won't work. In okay. command, you could run it, but it's only temporary. Okay. Okay, see, it came back into the graphical mode. If I do a run level or who hyphen R, it is showing you that the run level is in five. Okay, and the previous was nothing because this I think probably calculates from the time the server was up.
and it's set to row level 5 here okay and if you do system CTL and get default and you see it says here the default is target graphical graphical dot target that means GUI mode just for the sake of demo I'm going to restart it again it's going to go back into uh, GUI mode again Okay, so the system is up and it's in graphical mode again. Okay, so I'll do uh, who has an R, of course, in run level 5. I'm going to do a uh, system CTL, get default. So it's in um, run level graphical mode here. Okay, so now I'm going to set it back to the run level. Uh, I'm going to say multi user hyphen user dot target. And I'll hit enter. So what happened? It, it removed the um, it removed the symlink here in there and created a fresh symlink target to a default target and that symlink is targeting to a lib system D system and then these are the targets in there so if we go in this file here we're gonna see uh, all the other files in there to give me one moment here I'll do it here so we went in here and uh, change it back to change it on level back to change run level change your default run level to um, multi-user mode okay now since we set this as uh, if you do uh, <coughs> who have an R won't show you but if you do system CTL get default it will tell you it's in multi user mode okay and then if you do uh, in it six here the system restarts now unless you change this here if you restart the system thousand times it's gonna still stay in the uh, default mode now the default mode is multi-user mode
okay and the system when you connect back in the system should It's in run level three, and then if you get like uh, get defaults, this is where it all happens here. Okay. Okay, now what I'm going to do is let's take a look in here. Let's look at this file here, okay? Uh, yeah. So if you look in here, you see here the description is uh, this file. It says is multi-user mode. This is where it's set to. The default file target is in the multi-user mode. Okay, and the target is Description main system D special required basic dot target allocate okay, yes so I won't worry about what it's showing in here but you see uh, when you cat this file here the the default target file it is showing you the multi user system okay and let's go in here uh, let's go into this directory here. This file is, so if you do, if you do LSF and L on this file here, okay, this file here is actually pointing towards the Default dead target file right now is not the default dead target file. It is a multi-user dot target file. Okay. And when we change it, when we have changed it to uh, set default to a multi -u, uh, graphical graphical mode. And if you do LSF and L to the same line, so this part is going to remain the same, but it's pointing to the different file. That is what is going to trigger, trigger the uh, default uh, uh, defaults for the system here. Okay, a little bit confusing here, but I'm going to explain it more here. So let me. Here. Everybody, let's take a 15 minute break. Here. We'll be back at 12.30. I forgot about this here. Okay, break starts now. Okay, I'm back here. So, what will happen here is, this is the, when we did like system CTL, set default graphical, what it's doing here is it's rerouting uh, that set default, the default target file. It will become 
this file here wherever wherever the um, wherever the link is coming sim link that graphical target will change okay so let me show you here give me just a minute here So when we run this command here, right, set default, we run the command set default and we are telling it to set it as uh, the graphical, okay. So we are telling it to make it graphical. So what happens here is this file gets updated and they are now it's pointing towards the uh, file name, uh, uh, this file. So this default, each time the default file is getting updated and pointing towards a new, whichever target file is, okay? And it, if it was um, the multi-user target and this file gets pointed at. Any questions? Okay. All right. <clears throat> So, so far today, we are doing only informational here. You don't have to worry about all this here, but this is really, uh, uh, you guys should know how the, all these things works. Okay, so where, where is this, all these things are happening here? Now we have to take a look in here. Uh, system, user, lib, systemd, system.
Okay, so you have over here all these files here, right? So the one we are interested in, if I do ls hyphen l, I'm not worried about this here. Um, give me one second here. Right now, default system D, system, system D, system. <clears throat> system D. <clears throat> So we have a multi-user target. Okay, so we are interested in this file. Multi-user target. And uh, and we are interested in these two files here. So these two files are the one which tells the system when it's re getting redirected from here. If is uh, if these two files are set as default, then it will these two files get updated. Okay, so just worry about these two files here, okay? Okay, so this file gets activated for run level 3. And, oh shoot, okay, good. And this file gets activated for level 5. Okay, and uh, what is the other run level we work on? Uh, so other run levels is meaningless because Let's see if there is a run level in here which which says reboot, okay? Okay. So when you... <coughs> okay, don't 
everybody please don't do this in your career set uh, the run level <laughs> is to a reboot okay let's let's try this i haven't really tried in my life so let's try this here let's do uh system ctl set default can you uh, run that command from being in the system file or you have to change directory and go back into your no just run the system ctl command oh it doesn't okay. matter system ctl command will take it from this as uh, still as gui this is still as a okay. cli okay okay Okay, I am going to try this here. Set default. For D E F A U L T. All right. All right, let's see if this is going to go into a loop, reboot loop. All right, let me restart it and see what happens. Oh, okay. So it's keep rebooting, I think. Let it go into this here. Yeah. <clears throat> it's going to go into the system um, why is it doing that why is it why is it rebooting and rebooting because that's that is the default yeah so yep. it's going to reboot from the, until the end of the days so now, so how would you be able to okay you probably can explain that anyway yeah okay So now, so now the system is stuck in, now the system is stuck in reboot, reboot loop. Okay, it's so rebooting, rebooting. So this is going to kick off our explanation for how the um, rescue mode works So now, when the system is coming up like that here, right? So you have to wait for that menu to come up. So when, this, when the menu will come up, the grub menu, you have to uh, use any keyboard on the keyboard to interrupt that. Okay, so I'm using down arrow key. So there was a... Countdown here. I don't know if you notice or not. There is a countdown for three seconds, right? You have three seconds to interrupt this. What you have to do is 
you have to select this here when the system is rebooting so when the system is rebooting here, this is a grub. This is a grub menu. And then use up and down to change the selection. Oh. Okay, so if you notice this one here, use the up and down arrow to change the selection and we're gonna use the E to edit it. We're gonna use E to edit this and then we will try to rescue it now. Okay, so I'm going to say here interrupt the countdown using arrow keys. Let's do arrow keys. That's a safe way to do it. And then I'm going to do E as in Edward. Okay. And then you have to use down arrow keys and come back up here. And then over here you type Okay, let's see here control C2 command prompt or escape and control X to start okay it didn't do anything I was hoping it may okay so you go into this line here, okay? And give a space there and type rd.break, B-R-E-A-K. This is important. Which, which exact line you're typing in is really important here, okay? Because there are so many lines. So you have to make sure you come in into the grub line here. This line starts here and ends uh, where I'm typing. Uh, it ends here at UFT underscore eight. But you're, after that, you give a space there and you type this RD dot break. You have to type this. This is what it is. You're breaking the cycle.
rd dot break Alright guys, if you want to uh, practice this, this is going to be on your local system. Okay, so this is where the limitations for the online system comes in. So when you are there, so you do the right control X. The right control key on the right side of the keyboard and push X as in Xerox. Okay. Then push CTRL plus X. So what's going to happen now is the system goes through the cycle and it's going to launch itself into the rescue mode. There you go. So there is no putty. Unfortunately, you cannot use the putty here. Okay, so this command, some of the command doesn't work. So what I'm going to do is you do pwd and you are in root. So right now, the root is not in, the root is read-only mode what we have to do is we have to type a, another command which is called uh, you type the command ch not ch root uh, mount hyphen o loop comma read write and then you type sys, uh, sys root and hit enter command is mount hyphen o loop and then comma read write sys root okay so what we're doing is we are making the system to go into the read write mode what So I have to see which one is this. Uh, Okay, instead of loop, I have to type remount. Mount hyphen O remount comma read write sys root slash S Y S R O O T. Okay, this is the correct command. Okay, the clear command doesn't work. So let's do uh, our command here, systemctl get default. Okay, so now it's uh, it is sitting into the init rd. So after that, there is another command here. Actually, I'm missing that. So the another command you have to type is ch change root to sys root. Okay, now you are able to type some commands in here. Pwd and all that. So uh, before that, let me bring that command back systemctl get default
okay so this one is set into the reboot target here now is a good opportunity to change this right system ctl set default and i'm going to change it to multi user dot target there you go successful Actually, what I'm going to do is uh, here on the okay, don't run this. Okay, don't run this. Okay, you don't need this either. Okay, this is correct. This is correct. This is correct. And this is correct. Okay, and this is this is correct too. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to save this here. Okay, so mind hyphen o sys root. Then after that you type ch root sys root. And then after that you type system ctl get default. Then type system ctl set default okay um, then you type multi user dot target okay this is what we've been using right system ctl set default and before we quit there is a, one more command you have to type here. You type uh, um, touch, then a period and a forward slash, and you type auto relabel. No, forward slash, then a touch auto relabel and you hit enter okay and you type exit and you type reboot
this is a simple question. Yeah. You just typed in reboot. If if uh, other than reboot, if you had done init six, would it still work? Uh, let's you... I don't think it will work here because we are in. Uh, uh let's see yeah, we figure, if we're gonna do it. Okay, it worked. Honestly, I, I barely do this here, barely. I do like two times in a year. That's how rare this is. Not to fix only this problem here. So you could also do go in there and to do like uh, the LVM issue. If, the, if you want to go to ETCFS tab and remove the LVM, you could do that. You know, uh, any other reason the system is not booting, then you could definitely do these things. So what you learned is how to enter the rescue mode and one example of bringing the system back. Okay, it says a uh, relab relabeling could take a long time depending on file system here. Okay, so Okay, we'll wait for two more, two three minutes more. If the if it doesn't come back up, then we'll continue tomorrow. Okay. Okay, sir. So. Yeah, go ahead. What's the question? Okay, so as I said, it might take some time to come up. So let's uh, end the class here and we'll catch up tomorrow, okay? Any questions, put in the chat um, and then I'll try to make this. Uh, I'll put the video on right away, but uh, the document, it might take a little while, okay? Or I'm going to make the whole document right away and I'm going to try to break up, big, break it up a little bit later. So I'll put the whole document, go into the document section and uh, from here, when I say uh, the document is up, so just go in here, doc, this should be up to date here, okay? And then we'll go from there. All right, so we're going to end here. If no questions, uh, uh, I mean, if you have any questions, put it in the chat and then we'll go from there. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you. Have a good one. Yeah.